Hello and welcome to the Deep Three Podcast. This is your host Matt, joined as always by Sam, Kevin, and John. How's it going, guys? It's going. There's a big snowstorm right outside my window right now. Uh, a lot of a lot of snow. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I we're in Denver. We're vibing. We got winning teams here. It's a good time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm 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 also good. Uh, part of the highway uh, about 30 minutes away from me fell into the sea this week. So. <laughs> Oh Things are tight over here in California, baby. It's <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. <laughs> oh. The world is ending. Yeah, <laughs> so that's tight. <laughs> that, that's, that's lit. <laughs> All right, well, we get right into it with some NBA updates. Um, Clay roasted the fuck out of a dude. <laughs> That's just the biggest headline you could do there. Uh, first off, Clay is a top notch um, NBA reporter. Uh, j- just gonna throw that out there. He was wonderful interviewing Steph. Um, but yeah, he roasted the fuck out of a dude, John. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Clay is actually, that? he's like kind of what everyone thinks Draymond Green is as far as someone who just like speaks his mind very savagely like Trey like Clay was like he was he was like Roddy McGruder is just probably pissed because he's gonna be out of the league next year uh and and then like he just kept talking shit about Roddy McGruder and then like the other reporters who like are actually like reporters professionally were like okay Clay like whoa <laughs> Clay you gotta <laughs> slow down like <laughs> they're like we don't want to get in trouble <laughs> It's like, oh, sorry, it's hard. You know, Roddy's just such a piece of shit. I don't like <laughs> I mean, Like, in all honesty, like, if me and Kevin were there, we would just be hyping up Clay. Be like, dude, go off. Let's go, King. Let's go, King. <laughs> Yo, all I got to say is Clay for TNT. I want Clay on that TNT crew just roasting everyone, roasting Chuck every day. Like, that's all I want to see. <laughs> it would be so, like, if you had Clay on that panel, I don't think that Chuck or Shaq would know what to do with him because he's got such a flat affect. Like, he's like got no expression while he's just saying these absolutely savage things like and they'd be like i i don't i don't know what to do and then play with like show his rings to chuck and be like get the fuck out of here like, <laughs> i feel like i feel like shack kind of has the exact same expression though because like <laughs> he, he just mumbles things he's just like Oh, you know, I mean, there's this fight, and then I'm going to try and beat Kenny in a foot race, and that's not going to work out with my <laughs> yee-yee-looking-ass shoes. And uh... <laughs> I, I have to give props to Draymond Green's response yeah. during the interview. Draymond he said, great. when the fuck did Rodney Magruder become the tough guy on this team? Ain't nobody scared of no goddamn Rodney Magruder. Are you fucking kidding me? That's what he said. And I was just like blown away because this is the heat I've been looking for, Kevin. And I think you've been looking for this too, all right? You know, we've been getting this like internal, like everyone's brotherly love, like everyone's just like trading jerseys and stuff. But like, there's some like, it's just great knowing that there's like an actual face in the league that just will insult anybody who's not relevant in the NBA. And I'm sorry, Matt, Rodney Magruder, you're actually not relevant. Like, um, apparently the situation was. Uh, our boy Kevin Juan Toscano uh, was talking to uh, Wayne Ellington, who's the whole center part about this, like just talking some shit with him. And then Roddy McGruder's like comes in and starts like shoving like Juan. And then <laughs> Big One was like, I'm in the locker room. Like, I didn't even know any of this is happening. It's like, that's how irrelevant Roddy McGruder is. So I just, it's great. I kind of like some of this heat because I think it just re sparks uh, yeah. the competitiveness in the NBA. Yeah. yeah. It's and, and just, qu- I think like, um, if you're Rodney Magruder, I actually think it's important that you tender your letter of resignation, uh, find a second tier league in Europe, and just try to put back the pieces of your life for a couple of years. Uh, oh, but I thought you got. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, I think we spent enough time on Rodney Magruder. <laughs> yeah, or maybe more than anyone ever has. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> We're just going to move on. Starting off strong. Uh, Starting off strong. Yeah, but you want to know who is actually extremely relevant, Bradley Beal. He's just on a very irrelevant team right now. Um, there's a stat that said that he is, like, the first NBA player to score, I think it was, like, 40 points on average and lose, like, 10 games. That's pretty fucked up, if you ask me, guys. Um, we're I, I know we're all in agreement for Bradley Beal getting the hell out of there. Even though I don't know what his deal is, I don't know if he's just like, uh, what's the word? He's just 
does not want to leave there for whatever reason. But let's say that he does. Let's say he wakes up and he's finally like, you know what? I'm not a masochist. I don't like this that much. Um, Sam, where would you, as you take a drink, uh, where would you, <laughs> where would you like to see Bradley Beal? Uh, I had to clear my throat because it's going to be something ridiculous. It's a three-way trade. We're getting Bradley Beal to the Phoenix Suns in exchange for Devin Booker to the Golden State Warriors, James <laughs> Weissman and a, Kelly Oubre and a few first-round picks to D.C. Let's make that happen. Uh, sorry, this is going to take a little bit for me to process. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> man that's a lot did you just like spend all day yesterday just trying to figure that out uh, you know you, you do some research you listen to some people and you're like this could actually make sense for everyone because like john we were talking about outside of the podcast how the whole point with dc is that they should be rebuilding and not getting older veteran talent except for just people to be on the support role and for golden state um you know, I'm glad they proved me wrong because they are actually proving me wrong. And I think it's really just a Steph Curry thing. Like, I think Steph Curry was just showing that the, the back-to-back MVPs were not just, like, for show. Like, he's still here to stay. And, you know, sadly, no clay here. But imagine Devin Booker. As, with the role he's playing right now is a pure scorer. And with a Steph Curry-like point guard, I think it's, like, a perfect combo. And Bradley Beal with a Chris Paul. Like, what else could you ask? Like, you're getting the point guard, shooting guard combos set right with each of these teams. And James Wiseman with DC, that's what they need. They need an actual big man, not like a Thomas Bryant who can't play defense. Get James Wiseman the the face of this franchise at this point and see what we can do moving forward. You know, I think that's fine and all, but I'm a little bit concerned about James <laughs> Wiseman uh, going anywhere. That's a bad team. If I were... I would I would I would hate my life if I was traded to DC. I'm sorry, but like if I if I was like on the Golden State Warriors under Steph, under Draymond, under this amazing franchise, and then oh yeah, by the way, you're gonna you're you're gonna peace out to DC. Um <laughs> Hey, you got, you got Kelly with you. You got Kelly Oubre with you, all right? <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> We're getting Kelly back to DC. Everything. Yeah, that helps everything, man. Uh my bad, my bad. Um are we are, are are we all in agreement on this? I, I don't think I am, but Kevin, where do, where do you want to see Bradley Beal? I actually, I kind of like that, uh, mostly because I think Devin Booker is a fit for Golden State, and I like that kind of three-way trade. Um, I do think, I you know, you know I got some beef with Chris Paul, but I do think Bradley Beal and Chris Paul could be a really good combo. I think they're like kind of like both a little old school Uh they're both vets. They've both been around a while, and I think that'd be awesome to see. So I kind of like him going to going to the Suns a little bit. And, I mean, the Suns got a decent team, so if they got Beal, too, they'd be looking pretty good. That's decent. The problem, the problem that I have with Beal going to the Suns is that you kind of lose um, – your, I guess maybe your star player. Like, I mean, yeah, Bradley Beal, like Bradley Beal versus Devin Booker. That's, you can debate that to the end of time. They're both extremely, very good scorers, but like Devin Booker has a longer future than Bradley Beal does. And when you're trading him, it's just like, okay, we have an older guy now. He's a great scorer and whatnot, but like, we kind of need to win a title if we're going to make this move. And they're not in that kind of position to do that. But when you have Devin Booker on their team and you have Chris Paul to help like facilitate the ball and whatnot, you actually have some planning. You have some moves that you can make. Um, Personally, if I were the Suns, I would not go older, even though like, and that's not, and that's not like a diss to Bradley Beal at all. It's more so just like you kind of lose your face. You, you kind of lose the face of your franchise when you trade them. Um, John, who would you like to see Bradley Beal go to? Um, I still like the idea of him being on the heat. And I think that's definitely something still on the table. Um, but I think it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I, there's almost nowhere in the league that would be like worse. I guess except for like the Timberwolves. Like, uh, but but I think I would like to see him on the Heat, especially if the Heat can keep that core of like Butler and Bam. Um, 
if if the Wizards want to overvalue Tyler Hero, uh, like the rest of, or at least I guess like the Miami Heat seem to, like they can go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know. I just like it. Just it's gets so sad to watch all of these games where there's a clip at the end of like every single Wizards game of Bradley Beal when he goes to the bench when they're down 20 and then he puts his head in his hands and there's a stat line underneath that's like Bradley Beal, 43 points, six assists, like seven rebounds, and then they're down by like 20 to like some fucking any team. <laughs> like it's, so I don't know. For me, on just a personal level, I just want him out of there and I almost don't care about the fit as long as it's a team that's even league average is <laughs> like I just would be happy for Bradley Beal but yeah as far as like winning a championship I like the heat I think he could give them what they desperately need which is like a legitimate like killer killer scorer um yeah yeah and not only that but the heat are actually like I mean they they haven't been that great this year but you could also kind of chalk that up to COVID cases and whatnot and a lot of yeah. people being out like Bam and Jimmy. Jimmy just started and he had an insane game. My God. Sure <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that little wink, wink, nudge, nudge there, John. That was appreciated. <laughs> um, but no, dude, Bradley Beal deserves to deserves so much better. He deserves so much better. And that's all we want for him. Um, John, this is going to be uh, your most hated thing to talk about, but we kind of need to bring it up. So let's. Let's talk about the Mavs a little bit. <laughs> I wish my computer would have crashed during this segment. <laughs> Dude, what's going on with the Mavs? I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh I honestly don't get it either. I don't know how they're this bad. Um and and Kevin, I'll let you Kevin, I'll let Kevin uh give whatever uh whatever he thinks the case is. I'm sure he's gonna play Luca too much for this. Um uh, and Luca can't be blameless, you know, in a situation where things are this bad and the team, the roster doesn't seem like it should be a team that's losing this many games. Um, there's got to be some blame on Luca. I, I just don't think that, like, I, I don't, I really don't, I, I just don't understand exactly what is so wrong with it. I wonder if Josh Richardson's like not quite healthy yet. I feel like KP has never been able to find a rhythm this year because he hasn't been able to play, you know, more than one game uh, in a row. Like I, they're, they're just like, they're just not good right now. And I still, you know, I, like whatever you, uh, you fucking vultures uh, can say what you want. These guys are still going to be in the playoffs. Uh, still going to be in the playoffs. Sticking to it. Um, I am, I am fucking, I am riding this burning ship out into the sea. Uh, the Mavericks will be in the playoffs, despite how absolutely abysmal they have been playing. Uh, Luka Dodgers will not win the MVP this year. <laughs> uh, deservedly so. But, um, yeah, I, they, they, maybe they need to make a trade. I, I don't know what that would be, but it's, it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more so I think it's less on Luca and more so on Josh Richardson. Like you you pull in a lot of like he was kind of like the third player that was supposed to like push like be the final push for the Mavericks to actually be a strong contending team for the playoffs and he has not shown up at all. Um and Kate and, and like you said Kate just can't get in the rhythm. Yeah. Um, Kevin, Sam, do you have anything else to add on that? I know you, I know you jackasses want to say something, so get it over with. Yeah, I get my Kermit frog here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, once again, this is not a bash on Luca. I'm just saying if we're going to praise him like a superstar, we got to hold him accountable as a superstar. And he is not carrying the wind right now. I'm sorry to say that. I'm, you can have a whole different argument. I just don't see him being a what I would imagine as a superstar talent, he's still young. He's got plenty of years. I, I'm just saying, for me, this is Deshaun Watson syndrome, but with less physical debilitation on his career because it's basketball. Um, the, the the town around him is very lackluster. I really didn't like the Josh Richardson trade. I thought, I was just very skeptical on Josh Richardson's health when he was in Philly because he didn't play that many games. Uh, Tim Hardaway made a complete drop. I don't know what happened. He's not on, he should not be playing basketball at all at this Old point. Old man, that's that is, what happened. <laughs> It's, um, and the Dwight Powell return, um, the man did tear his Achilles, but they're not doing the pick and roll. That was what, how they were winning games, that they're doing the old school pick and roll that Chris Paul would do with a lot of his centers. And I think that's what 
how Luka's going to dominate this game is that he needs a true center that can be a true pick and roll. Because Maxi Kleber doesn't do that. He does a screen and roll, and he rolls out to the three-point for the three-point. And then he's probably going to miss it, in all honesty. Um, Willie Clay's time was, I don't know, he's homeless. I mean, he shouldn't even be on the NBA as well. Like, I'm, you shouldn't have people named, like, Finney Smith starting. Like, that's just too long of a last name, in my opinion, for someone <laughs> That only makes, like, eight points a game. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you're not Giannis, okay? Only Giannis is allowed to have, like, 27 letters in his name. Um, <laughs> uh, this, this team is full of guards that are way too small. Uh, Trey Burke, Dylan Brunson. I think they're very smart, but I don't think that's what you need on this roster. You need tall guys. You need to play big basketball. And um, I think they're failing Luka a lot. Rick, Car- Rick Carlisle can only do so much. And I think his rotations are very bad, uh, especially compared to last year's team, which was, in my opinion, still a significant jump for – only trading off like one or two players. So uh, that was do better. I mean, do worse because I'm a Spurs fan, but do better for Luca. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's a very accurate thing to say that they're kind of failing Luca. And I, I do think that that, that that has a lot of truth to it. Uh, Kevin, is there any two cents that you want to you wanna throw in? Yeah, I, I really don't put this all on Luca. I mean, obviously, like John said, I think he does have to have some blame in this, um, but I think it mostly is uh sam you put it perfectly it's kind of deshaun watson syndrome whereas the like the rest of the team seems to not really care like when luca's your main person to get rebounds like even kp and willie collie stein aren't getting rebounds they're averaging like maybe five rebounds each or something like that like against the jazz one of these games luca had like seven rebounds the next highest was uh or Luca had six rebounds. The next highest was like four. Willie Colley Stein had three and KP had, or no, KP had nine. Sorry. But uh, they're like, the team isn't doing much else to help. Like they did. It seems like they just don't want to help. Josh Richardson's trash. He's playing like 25 to 30 minutes a game and scoring like four points uh, and getting like one rebound and one assist. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. is old. Finney Smith is. Finney Smith. Almost useless. <laughs> uh, I, I, this team is just very, very thin, I think. They have some people who can play well sometimes, but no one else really consistent other than Luka. Uh, KP obviously is good, and we know he's good, but he's just not consistent enough yet. Um, so I think they really need to trade for someone, but I don't know who they can trade because if they get rid of KP or Luka, they're they're screwed even more. <laughs> so I don't know what you do because I don't know any team that would be like, yeah, give me Willie Cauley Stein for someone. <laughs> I, I actually, Kevin, I think you touched on something very important too, is that like Luca is the best rebounder on that team. And that's always, I, you know, that's been a part of his game since like he was in Europe. Um, he's yeah. a good rebounder. KP has never been a good rebounder and he's just not a physical enough player to do it, which is silly because he's seven foot three. Um, exactly. You should be able to get like, rebounds just by being tall. Like, uh, and, uh, and and he just doesn't. I think that, like, someone that would be great on this team, because you mentioned, Sam, the, the pick-and-roll chemistry that the, Luca just doesn't have with anyone right now. Um, I wonder if they target someone like Clint Capella. Um, Yo, I'm in. Uh, like, that could be not only, like, a great pick-and-roll partner, like, which we know he can do because that's what he does with Trey. That's what he did with James Harden. That's his bread and butter. He's also one of the best rebounders in the league. Um, so, you know, if you could get Clint Capella there and if he was healthy, I think that makes this team at least, like, more stable. Um, I, I just wonder, like, you know, obviously, of course, I don't know that Clint Capella is even available, but I'm just like, you know, there should be, like, I, I, they have to make a move at some point. I think that this is getting, like, and here's the other thing, really quickly, uh, so that we don't talk about this too long, but they're 30th in the league in three-point shooting right now. Um, that's I don't think that's going to continue. Um, they have a lot of guys on this roster that are good three-point shooters, and I think that eventually, you know, it's going to regress back to, like, the norms that they should have. I'm not saying they'll become the best team in the league at it, but I can't imagine they stay at 30th just given the guys that are on this team. So I think that's going to be a big part of turning things around. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's 
it's really ugly right now though like you know it's bad <laughs> it's, it's, it's not good <laughs> yeah mavericks are having a rough time um but you want to know who isn't having a rough time the jazz utah jazz have been very 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 good uh, i believe they're number one in the west right now and <laughs> although they had a bad loss of nuggets uh guys they're on fire uh, they're doing extremely, extremely well. Let me just pull up their record so far. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. They're number two in the West. They're 15 and five. Uh, the Clippers are actually first in the West with their win over the Knicks today, uh, 16 and five. Um, what's going great? What's going great for the Jazz, Sam? It's like I told you guys last week, all right? The Utah Jazz are the best team in the West, I think, at this point. <laughs> um, uh I think the big point, I know John, we talked about this earlier too, is I think Mike Conley finally stepping up to his role. Um, that's the thing that Don and Mitchell needed from the guard position is that as much as we have a Jordan Clarkson role from the sixth man, which I think is perfect, uh, we still need the guard to help Don and Mitchell produce those numbers. Um, and maybe it's a coronavirus. Maybe the coronavirus had some sort of unity factor. Like maybe it's some sort of like mutation variant where everyone just loves each other and likes to play good basketball. Um, like Bogdanovich balling out again, even Joe Ingles, my boy Jingles balling out. Everyone knows their role. And like we said before, this team is just running it back, running it back, running it back, adding one piece, losing one piece. Like the last time they were in a, like, I thought they were good in the playoffs was when <laughs> Joe Johnson was there. And that was like bad Joe Johnson. So <laughs> this team, this team has really picked up a lot. And it's, it's genuinely surprising. I think everyone understands their role. And then it's Utah. There's nothing else to do in Utah. Okay. We're not Mormons. More. The else. Mormons are doing great. The Mormons <laughs> are having a fantastic time right now, going to church on Sundays, and then just praying that the Jazz can actually do something. Um, Kevin, what do you think is the uh, who do you who do you think is the biggest factor in in their win streak? I I think it's it, it's not any one person like most teams. I think they're much more like a a Spurs team from a couple years ago, where like. Every single person is – they have, like, seven people every game getting double-digit points. And they're, play, they're playing – everyone's playing both sides of the court. Like, it's not like you have two people who are your scorers who just play offense and just get all your points, and then the rest of your team on the floor plays defense. Like, everyone's doing everything at all times, which is awesome to see. Mike Connolly's playing great. I think he is – probably the person I'd point to to say is making the most impact just because his play last year to his play this year is such a big jump. Even if his stats aren't like unreal or anything like that, I think he just has a lot of impact on the team. Um, and I don't know. I I'm, I'm impressed with this team. I, I don't know if they go up against a Lakers team or a Nets team in the playoffs that they do well against them. But right now they're they're looking pretty good, especially for regular season. I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Um, again, it's hard to not do well when you have seven or eight people every game scoring double digit points. That's that's awesome to see. Yes, it is. It is wonderful to see. But on the side of the East, in this corner, we have the Brooklyn Nets <laughs> winning six of their past eight games with James Harden. Only lost to Cleveland, but they have beaten Milwaukee, Miami twice, the Hawks, and the Thunder. John, are we ready to side with the Nets? Um, yeah, sure. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like, it, it sucks because there's not, they're not, like, meaningfully different from what we were talking about last week. Um as in, like, they're still having these very high-scoring games, but it's just, like, um, you just get to the fourth quarter and they get to choose between having Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, or James Harden just, like, completely close out a team, you know, when none of them have to try their hardest throughout the game. They can always just, like, depend on one another, and they're still, like, not gassed in the fourth quarter, and they can just light people up. So they're a great closing unit. Um and I think that's been the key because they have these high scoring games, except for the one against Miami where they actually were both under a hundred points, which I don't think anyone would have predicted uh, <laughs> that that would happen in a Nets game pretty much the rest of the season. I, you know, the Nets are going to be a big, they're going to be really good. They're, uh, 
it's just they're going to have some frustrating losses, I think, that are going to make it really difficult to figure out what we can really expect from them once we get to the playoffs. I, because it's just like it is still very much like offense, 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 uh, and some more offense. Like, it, I think they're a lot of fun. I just like they're obviously I, I feel the same as I did last week. They need to make changes if they want to be able to like have a team that they can rely on when like these guys get cold, when they're not like shooting as well and they're not, they need to be able to make stops. Like they're cool. They're fun. And they're going to be really good, but I still am not a hundred percent sold on them as um, like the best team in the East for the time being. Yeah, totally. Um, <clears throat> Kevin, you know, when we're talking about the best teams in, in the NBA, um, typically, you know, they end up stopping them over other really great teams. Um, you know, there's one team that I have in mind, uh, in the West It's on the tip of my tongue, the Lakers, right? So the Lakers, they recently lost a couple of games recently. Um, uh, they battled it out with the Sixers. They lost by one point. That was a very good game. Um, uh, very good game, but, <sighs> Who was the, who was the other team that they lost to recently? I, I don't know. I don't know who you're you don't talking. Know. About. <laughs> you're not. You're not sure. It wasn't. It wasn't. A team. It wasn't a team in uh, Michigan. No, I don't. I don't think. What team? What teams are in Michigan? I don't even know. <laughs> hey, hey, he ain't wrong there. He ain't wrong. <laughs> hey, all we all we know is Matt Stafford left in Michigan to go to L.A. That's all we know. <laughs> no, um, the Lakers lost to the Pistons. What do you got to say for yourself? I, I mean, it was an ugly game. Uh, When you have Kyle Kuzma as you're basically as your second best person, it's it's scary. Um, But I mean, AD was out. Like, what do you what do you want from the Lakers when their second best player on the team is out? Uh, They don't really have another guy to fill that position that well. Uh, So you put Kyle Kuzma at forward, and you're like, "Eh?" hmm. Um, so, uh, John, you can go first. Um, I, yeah, I just, so have, yeah, I think that when the Lakers second best player, Anthony Davis is out of the game, um, what I would expect from the, uh, presumed, uh, Western conference juggernaut is that they don't lose to the Detroit Pistons when they're still playing <laughs> LeBron James, uh, in one of essentially the most effective, uh, assemblies of complimentary talent in the league. Um, you know, losing to losing to uh, busted, dusted Blake Griffin uh, and, <laughs> and fucking Jeremy Grant. Like, it, I'm sorry. It's you know, teams are gonna have bad losses every year, but holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, typically when you're drinking the fine wine, you're not having a bad time. You're enjoying yourself. You feel a little classy, you know, this is, this is like, Oh my God, 1920s. What a good year. Um, you know, you're sniffing it, you're letting it, you're letting it chill out for a little bit. Then you take your sip and you're like, Oh, this is so, so, so good. Um, never would you expect to open up that fine wine, take a sip and be like, what the fuck am I drinking? This is ass. Um, look, the Lakers got a much better team, and they still lost to the Pistons. That is very unfortunate. I think there have been a bunch of other bad losses this year, like to to whatever point that you might make for the Lakers. I get it. You know, like John said, every single team's going to have a bad loss. But goddamn, <laughs> yeah, look, L's Lakers. You look, guys- look, 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 look. The Los Angeles Clippers lost by fifty points. What are we talking about at this point? They lost by fifty. 50- that's that the most embarrassing thing possible for anything in LA history. LA history. Yeah. I would rather have an earthquake than have that situation ever happen. Think about that. That's how bad I thought it was. That. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, John. I, get, I, I guess that it's just like the Clippers lost to the to the Mavericks by fifty points earlier in the season. Uh, they had Luka Doncic on that team, um, helping them out. And then the Lakers lost to the Pistons, <laughs> who have Blake Griffin. They have a Plumley. Uh, they have the, Derek Rose. And, and we know we know that those we know those Plumleys are um, they're a mighty brooch. Uh, so uh, 
<laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, the Lakers are fine. You got to find like little things to talk shit about the Lakers for because they're so good. But also, like, you lost to the Pistons. You guys are fucking losers. You had LeBron James in that game. <laughs> are you kidding me? You had LeBron James. <laughs> Look, maybe LeBron, right before the game, he was like, fuck, we're in Detroit. Okay, I might as well get a drink at this point. Like, we're just going to be coasting. And then, you know, maybe it was a little too much wine. He coasted too much. And I, I think what we need to check is if there's any clutch clients in Detroit because maybe LeBron was like, okay, we need to get someone a paycheck tonight. Like, we need to. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm, if I'm clutch, I ain't signing anybody in Detroit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I would sign Jeremy Grant. That might be nice. But. Yeah, uh... I would sign Jeremy Grant. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, okay. I mean, like when when you're trying to figure out what, which player you'd want more, um, you have Jeremy Grant and you have uh, Trez. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I might as well have Derrick Rose at that point. Like, I'd rather just have Derrick oh. Rose. Today. Let's save Derrick Rose's career. All right, come on. <laughs> yeah, Derrick Rose got to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he really does. <laughs> um, sorry about that, Kevin. We had that. We had the bash on you. We we had our fun with the Mavericks, and now it's time to have our fun with the Lakers. That's fair. Um, the Lakers who lost to the Pistons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, going on to the next one, Sam. The mm-hmm. Nuggets. They're doing pretty well. They're a four seed now. Um, Jokic. He had an insane game today, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, look, I think. The thing is not questioning Jokic because we know how to how superb he is. Um, the question is the supporting cast, and I think the real X factor to this, and not even X factor, the, the guy who should have been here for finally following the protocols for COVID is Michael Porter Jr. That guy is actually I've never seen such like swag to a player like that for that was a late lottery pick. I, I mean, the, the guy balls out like he should have been number one in that draft at that point. Um, I, I'm genuinely impressed. The composure for this team is. I don't even want to say the composure for this team because the team is not really that existent, but I think some of the pieces are finding their roles. Like Paul Millsap should be homeless at this point. I don't want him doing anything. The man's free throws are horrendous. Like, I don't think you could be that short unless your name is Dwight Howard. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> like, I think like a key factor is Michael Porter Jr.'s presence. Uh, we're getting some Jamal Murray, some, some presence there. Um, I'm actually more surprised with Jermichael Green. I think he actually finds the true role. I think he, he was not utilized correctly at the Clippers. Um, I think before that, he was a great, you know, great player for the Memphis Grizzlies. And I think he actually finds his key spot with the Denver Nuggets. So I, I'm impressed. Um, Jokic is Jokic. I mean, Joker, the Joker is going to do what he's going to, what he's going to do at this point. So um, I, I don't know how sustainable it is because I don't trust Michael Porter Jr. falling protocol again. So... <laughs> Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, Kevin is sitting pretty over there with Joker on his team. <laughs> hey, he's, he scored like, what, 75 fantasy points today? Uh, I ain't complaining, and he ain't going anywhere. We'll see. We'll talk. He, we'll talk. <laughs> he has to, Kevin has to say that because then Brian and John will feel the need to throw out more trades. <laughs> I, I, one of these times, I'm going to get one of you two to just offer me just too much and but you won't think i'll take it and then i'll take it and uh, take your entire team with you <laughs> maybe I, uh, yeah <laughs> I, I do i do just want to say like about the nuggets and about Jokic specifically is Jokic obviously had an incredible game today he had like 45 47 points or something like that um let me tie this back quickly to the jazz what the fuck did we sign rudy gobert to that contract for uh if Jokic is gonna come in that's like you have Rudy Gobert you don't have him here to stop fucking um like Clint Capella or whatever like you know you don't have him there to stop like these guys that are good setters but not great ones you have Rudy Gobert there to be competing against those guys like Jokic and Jokic comes on and he absolutely dominates him like it's not even like it, there's there's like no ifs and or buts about it he destroyed him and Jokic is obviously like either the best or second best center in the league. Rudy Gobert, like, that's the game that you mark on your calendar and you say, this is my matchup. Like, this is the night that I'm here for and I need to show up and show why I'm valuable. And he got literally, like, clobbered. He got, it was, it was, it was (laughs) embarrassing. Uh, I I was, I don't know. Like, obviously, it's hard to stop someone like Nikola Jokic. Um, you can't double a guy like that because he's mm-hmm. so efficient scoring, but he's also such a unique talent. 
passing the ball that you can't really double someone like him. Regardless, like Rudy, I'm sorry, like you can't let that happen. Like when we get to the playoffs and you guys inevitably are matched up again, like <laughs> that cannot happen. That cannot happen, Rudy Gobert. Hey, hey, That's man. all I got to say. <laughs> Hey, I, I don't worry. I already printed out his ticket back to Paris. Don't worry. We'll see. Him <laughs> we'll see him <laughs> Jesus Christ! Look, defensive player of the year, my ass. Um, why don't we get into the game of the week? This game of the week, we had the we had the uh, L.A. versus Philly. Turned out to be a really really good game, guys. Um, I think the biggest, uh, in my opinion, um, there was a lot of like Embiid. You know, clearly. Like, oh, my God, you know, MVP, he's going to be killing it. You know, this really solidifies everything. But the person that really stepped up in this game was Ben Simmons, in my opinion. The dude was guarding LeBron like no other. Not to mention that he got a triple-double in that game. The dude balls out. The dude was balling out. Um, Obviously, the 76ers won the game. But why don't we go around the podcast and just give our little two cents on what we liked about the game and what we are hoping to see Uh, from these two teams again. Sam, I'll start with you. Kevin, I'm very surprised. Um, Our boy, very dirty basketball at the end, you know? Like, we can't be hurting our MVP like that. No, look, I mean, like, it was was uncalled for. I can definitely say that. Uh, I I don't think it really questions LeBron's character, in my opinion. I think it's a different thing. But, you know, in my opinion, I think Anthony Davis played very bad in that season or in that game. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard the like interview like from Bleacher Report where he said it's harder to play FIFA than to guard Anthony Davis for yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, okay. Yo, I like this kind of beef guy. I need this kind of beef in the NBA because I, I don't like the lovey dovey now. I'm sorry. We we watched the documentary, 90s basketball. We had Jordan balling out. That was fun shit where everyone's just talking smack and then you know just balling out at the end of the day. And um Joel and B, I think was like you said, I think. We all knew Joel Embiid is going to be his game at this point. Um, impressed by Ben Simmons. I went a little question on the defense because, John, we were talking with the Marcus Saul. When Marcus Saul and LeBron James become a very interesting duo, like that can be like very dangerous on the pass and go, cut into the paint. Um, and I think Ben Simmons got a little lost then, but I still respect the, the young king, uh, Ben Simmons. And I think the disrespect I've given to this man, not Ben Simmons, who I'll bring up now, is Tobias Harris. Uh, I know we disrespect, disrespected him a lot. Um, props to Doc Rivers because he actually gave this man a reason to earn that bag now because, like, he is balling out. Uh, definitely knows his role. I mean, he coached him back in uh, when he was in L.A. And uh, this team is finally finding some sort of sense. And I think it just might be a culture thing where Doc Rivers comes in. And I think a big thing is you're having the right people who are holding people accountable, which Brett Brown never did. He reminds me of Scott Brooks where he takes the blame for himself. Blame your players. They're being paid way more than you, and they're going to last longer than you, right? You throw them under the bus. And quick side note, that's why I don't like Brad Steen because he doesn't do shit for the Celtics at this point, okay? Um, and this team is doing a great job. And I overall, just a great, fun game. Yeah, you just had to throw Brad Stevens on the bus, didn't you? And uh, Kemba, Kemba too. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh God, uh, Kevin. Uh, I really liked this game, but I was really disappointed in, especially the Lakers bench. Like they were just not showing up to play at all. Wesley Matthews almost no stat line. Montrose Harrell should is shouldn't get any playing time at this point. He has not done anything this season. He last year he was six man a year, and then he comes to Lakers and is like, "Yo, best I can do is like two rebounds a game, maybe two points, and one assist, and like <laughs> on twenty minutes of playing time." It, it's it was bad, uh, and I don't know. I I think. It was really impressive to see, like, Ben Simmons' defense. Joel Embiid obviously always kills it. Um, but I think this 76ers team is definitely beatable, and I think the beatable by the Lakers especially, and I think the Lakers just weren't showing up to their full potential. But this is still the series in the playoffs or finals that I want to see the most uh, is these two teams going up against each other because I think they're – it's just a really fun matchup to watch because I think they are really evenly balanced in a lot of ways. Uh, and so I just want to see more of these games. And I think 60, 70% of the time, I think Lakers are going to win. 
but I think the the seventy sixers played really well and took advantage of every mistake the Lakers made, and uh, that's what you got to do to beat them. That's a fair point, John. Uh, I mean, my favorite part of this game was watching clips on Twitter while I was working at the front desk of H and R Block. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. It's cool. I, I don't have a lot to say. Obviously, I'm just like. Eh. I, I am excited about these two teams. They're both really great. They figured out how to play with each other. And um, give me more. I, 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 I honestly, like, I love it. Uh, so, yeah, sick. absolutely. It was <laughs> great all around, honestly. It was a really fun game to watch. We have our last thing. We have our next uh, game of the week that we're going on. Um, so around the podcast, we'll just like kind of give a little bit since we're kind of crunching for time right now, we'll just like give our little two cents on the game. And then we'll, of course, uh, give our player of the game and um, who we think will win. And this week we have the Clippers versus the Nets. That's going to be a hell of a game, guys. I've got um, this is going to kill me. I think I think the Clippers win. I kind of do think the Clippers win. I think Kawhi has been having a fantastic season and Paul George isn't in the playoffs. So maybe that means he's more reliable. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was my Paul George slander for the episode. Um, I, I, ha- I think it's going to be really close, but I think Kawhi is going to pull it out for them. Uh, Sam. Um, I think we all know the interesting matchup is going to be Kawhi KD. It's really the, the whole like story over the past like five years, like who's going to be the quote unquote number two, I guess. Like we're now we're defining it where Kevin Durant was always number two, but we're kind of seeing now Kawhi's transition because we lost KD for a little bit and then he sold out to Golden State. Um, so he kind of like dethroned himself there on his own. And I think that'll be a fun match when it comes to probably the best offensive scorer ever. I think that I could probably say that I'm very confident that Kevin Durant is probably the most deadliest scorer um, ever in NBA history. Um, mm-hmm. and you're probably going against one of the best defenders to play the game as well with Kawhi Leonard. So I think that'll be the key matchup to watch. And I'm going to go, my is bad, but I think I'm going to go with uh, Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers. I think they can pull it off. That's fair. It's hard. It's hard, man. Uh, Kevin, what do you got? <laughs> Yo, y'all are tripping. <laughs> oh, that's some whack shit. Nets are going to take this by 20 points minimum. Like, Nets. I don't know what. Like, uh, what Nets, Nets are going to destroy the Clippers. Listen, yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi can play defense. Paul George can play defense, sure. But you have two stars. The rest of the Clippers team is abysmal. And you have three superstars on the Nets in Harden, Kyrie, and KD. Kyrie. So one of them at all times will be open. Because you only have two people to defend against those three people. So you just pass it to whoever whoever's open, you win the game. This is gonna this is gonna be if there was gonna be one more blah in the season like the Clippers Mavs earlier, it will be this game. I, I don't think oh. it'll be that much, but I think the the Ma- or the Nets are gonna embarrass the Clippers and Paul George is gonna <laughs> whine on Twitter about how bad James Harden absolutely roasted him yo go off king i like that i wow. like that R- ridiculous but i love it who guards- <laughs> okay who, who guards Kyrie? on on the clippers who guards Kyrie? reggie jackson reggie oh, jackson are you fucking kidding me who needs to guard Kyrie? he's gonna go like two for 17 at this point i mean i can't trust on the consistency of a Kyrie irving at this point you said three superstars what are you talking about Kyrie irving get him off that list stop uh, Kevin Durant oh, the best player of the NBA at this point. <laughs> John, do you want to try? Uh, I mean, okay, yeah, it'll be uh, Kevin. There's a delusional gift waiting for you later. It's um, that's ridiculous. Uh, no, I. Uh, it's going to suck because I'm also picking the Clippers here, and it's going to suck if the Nets win because Kevin is going to absolutely <laughs> destroy us all. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. I think the Clippers are going to win. I think that their uh, their team is just like a more reliable group where they're, I think, right now, the most efficient three-point shooting team in the league. Kawhi and Paul George have been incredible. Uh, Kawhi, player of the game. Um, and I don't know, man. Kevin, I think that you're – I think that you have a lot of residual hatred uh, left over – for the Clippers from last year, and I think that uh, I think it's an ugly look, Kevin. I think it's a <laughs> I think it's very cold of you. I, 
it's going to be a good game. And that's why we picked it for the game of the week, because uh, it should, I think, be a good matchup of two teams that, um, you know, if the Clippers need to score, they're going to score. If that's what this game is going to look like. And uh, and let's just see if if the Nets can keep up with that Clippers defense. Um, that'll be the fun part of this game. So I'm excited, uh, but I'm picking the Clippers, picking Kawhi. Yep. Uh, this will be very interesting. Kevin, once again, uh, maybe you're drinking a little bit too much of the sauce. I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm did just you saying, buy... if the Nets end up winning, I get an entire podcast episode to roast all of you. No, 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 no. You did. I did. I did. Here's why. It's because you said that the Nets will beat the Clippers by 20 points minimum. So if that happens, sure. I, but that's I, not going to happen. You promise. <laughs> well, you saw it here, folks. Uh, Kevin's delusional banter is going to get him in a hole. Um, that's our game of the week. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening to the show. Uh, this is the Deep 3 Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, Please like, share, and subscribe for the show to listen to more of our banter and more of Kevin's high-induced, drink-induced. I don't, I don't know what the fuck you are on right now, but I kind of want some uh, delusional thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to the show. Peace out. Feel or no feel.